Chris Copeland, crime prevention analyst, joins me now from Fort Worth, Texas. Chris, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. All right. So the story is drones and local police, fire departments, they're, they're increasingly part of the repertoire. Are they not? We're using drones for what reasons now? Well, a number of reasons. Uh, you know, police use them to, to gain uh, an aerial viewpoint to see where they need officers, you know, any, any potential hazards, uh, better places to scout things, sometimes just traffic jams, seeing into places where they can't get officers currently. Uh, fire departments use them to see how, you know, structural integrity of a building, how far a fire has reached, uh, or to get to places where they can't see where they would need a helicopter or some other support service. Okay, all good. Uh, there is all bad, good, th- but there is bad with all good, correct? I mean, you've got these. There, there, there can be. There can be the potential for bad. Yeah, uh, and and that mostly falls into privacy concerns. Well, that, uh, that know, and, you, and and in any YouTube, you want to go Google guys putting machine guns on a drone, and what you would do around a stadium in Dallas with a guy with a drone with funny stuff on it i don't you know as far as crime prevention i don't i don't have any idea what you would do with that uh more more than likely they'd shoot it down well yeah but what about uh, the fragments or what if it detonated or what are these i mean all these other concerns that's true i mean there there are a number of of different of different issues um uh, you know at work and and the the real problem here is nobody knows really how to deal with some of this stuff because the technology is so rapidly developing. Yeah. You know, uh, although in Dallas-Fort Worth we've had drones in service by police agencies here for four or five years, um, you know, the, the cost of these drones have been somewhat price prohibitive for just the average everyday person, and that's come down. Uh, so now, if I want to, I can go down to any you know major retail outlet and buy one uh, relatively cheaply. I mean, they they are still somewhat expensive, uh, and then do with it as I please because I own it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. the FAA has put in some regulations, and so has local and state uh, state laws. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a big drone guy. Uh, my my uh, Benjamin, my son Benjamin, got his. You know, you have to go through a process now. Uh, to kind of be a guy that can be a commercial drone pilot. So they've made the regulations a little tougher, but uh, the the average uh, yo-yo out there that's trying to fly in a drone in traffic, you know, you got to be careful who's doing all of it. So it's proper usage and training and all those other good things that always come with this stuff. But I think it's great. I think the tools that can be used by law enforcement with the drones, it just feels like a sci-fi movie, Chris. We're here. we got these buzzing things going around checking me out. Man. Yeah. Yeah, but still no flying cars. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. We got cars. <laughs> but you got. I mean, you, can you believe I had to that? Throw, I'm sorry, I had to throw that up. No, up. no. But I mean, it, it's. Uh, but we got guy. I, I mean, within what a decade, Chris, aren't you and I going to be going to work with somebody driving my car like a machine? Um, I can only hope, given Dallas traffic. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know if you've ever been in Dallas Fort Worth traffic, no, yeah, but yeah, if I can yeah, stay off yeah. the roads it's, or if I can read a book while something else drives me to work, absolutely. I'm in up. on that. Can you imagine the work you can get done and you're in the back seat and you got a limo driver? The question is, would you trust it? Uh, it depends on who came up with the technology and the standards that are implemented. You know, Unfortunately, I'm a techno geek, so uh, that matters to me. But uh, you know, ultimately, if the standards were followed, yeah, I'd probably trust it. I don't think we're going to see the Jetsons anytime soon. So the Jane, your wife, do do do. I don't think that we're going to. You and I, Chris, probably going to see that flying car stuff. But I, I wouldn't be shocked if that happened in the next hundred years, where we're going to fly around. So, Chris, fun. I appreciate you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank, thanks for having me. Crime prevention analyst at uh, Tarlington State University mm-hmm. down criminology. Tarlington.edu/slash criminology. Chris Copeland.